this part of my life is uh, a little bit easier to explain, is it, although much harder to understand. I, I think that uh, as you talk about a couple being engaged and that at, at the kind of the height of the excitement of their relationship this season, uh, for me, uh, increased the depth and the wonder uh, of the mystery uh, of God. Uh, the feeling that God was moving me uh, toward himself in a way that I, I couldn't explain or understand. I think one of the things that, that I'd share about this season in my own in my own spiritual life is, is again, prayer. Uh, prayer more and more, as I said before, was, had less and less words in it. And, and now I think that was more and more the true. But as, as God continued to set the agenda in my prayers, I found that, that more and more in prayer time, He seemed to be disengaging me. The things that were on my heart, the things that I needed to do, things going on in my family and the world around me that I'd kind of come into my prayer time with and all ready for him to kind of deal with, speak to, seem to just download in a matter of seconds. And his presence began to break in in ways that I had not really ever experienced before. I think it... It must be that as some of these areas of my life became more and more healed and I was able to abandon myself more fully to his gentle presence, he began to reveal to me the alpha and the omega of who he was. I found as I look back particularly that, that the Lord in his love would have come to me with all of his light and love, but it would have blinded me and overpowered me and frightened me and disabled me. But now he had created in me a heart more supple to his presence, more able to discern and to receive his loving light. There were times of prayer where time would disappear. That kind of scared me at first. I, you know, I'd sit down and I'd figure, I'd, okay, Lord, I got, I've got 45 minutes here, and, you know, what do you want to talk about? What do we want to do? And I'd sort of wake up and 45 minutes had gone. There'd been no prayers said. There'd been no thoughts that had happened. Uh, I don't think I'd been asleep. But something had gone on, and my spirit was somehow different. I'd been someplace with God, but I had no idea. There were no pictures. There was another time when I was sitting in my room and reflecting and reading in the Word, and it was as if the room lit up with light. It was as if the love of God were palpable and real and alive. It was as if the room was filled with fire of love in a particular way. I fell to my knees at the side of my bed and, and worshipped God with my heart and cried out for Him and enjoyed His presence and His love. In an instant, it was gone. And my heart was broken and longed for him. I had no idea. I thought I understood his love and, and suddenly I had experienced light and beauty and presence in a way that I never knew existed. And suddenly it was gone. My reaction, I have to admit, was sort of naive. I, mean, I, you know, I was upset at God. I said, God, why even show me this? Why, why even let me taste it when I've got to live day to day in the kind of darkness of this world? Why even show me? 
my monk friend that asked me about it. He says, well, Tom, if the flicker of God's light would do this to you, what would the flame do? And I was humbled. God began to reveal to me that heaven is not someplace else. That the kingdom of God is not someplace else. And that Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That the kingdom of God is very close to you. I began to realize that he'd spoken literally and factually. It's not to come out there, although it is that. It, and it's as if God began to give me a peripheral vision that I could almost see and feel and be aware of the saints. I don't know what to call it. Of life, beauty. But it's like peripheral vision. When you look, it's gone. But And realizing God calling me to live my life in the presence of its reality. And so when Paul said to us in Romans that I've come to see that the sufferings of this present age are nothing to be compared with the glory that's to be revealed to us. I became able in to enter in in new ways into the pain of others, into their suffering, into their poverty, and into their fear. While I think at one time it had sucked me some way into that darkness, I was able to allow that to come into the light in which I was beginning to learn to share with the Trinity and to minister and to love and to care as if that person and me had been drawn into the very kingdom of God. And now all that was happening was being experienced in that presence. My prayer time wasn't always filled with the presence of God. There were, there were times when, when he was absolutely absent. It's when I'd go into my prayer closet and there was nobody there. So I don't want to make it sound like it was all filled with these times. But I really learned in this season more than ever before what it means to wait upon the Lord. To wait upon the Lord and to seek his face. To know that he was present to me but that, that my faith had to be matured. I realized that I didn't care as much about the things in my life as I did before. And I'm still in process on that one, but for me, growing up, I... You know, what other people thought of me was pretty important. Uh, their acceptance, their approval, and I began to find in me uh, an increasing freedom. You know, I think I noticed it most profoundly in my marriage, in which how I experienced and was able to give and receive love was terribly important to me. And God began to set me free from the need to receive it and the freedom to give it. He began to show me that all my needs were met in Him and that I was now free to receive the approval or the disapproval of others and enjoy it or accept it. That I was able to enjoy the love of my wife, the fantastic gift that she is to me, but not need it in a way that sucks it from her. The difficulty of this time was the inability of anyone to really talk to about what I was experiencing. Was it God? Was it the devil? How did I know? How did, what did it mean? I had an experience once that I shared by mistake. 
I was sitting in my prayer chair. I was in prayer. It was quiet. And suddenly I felt myself speeding through space. The stars were going by. My, they were flying past. It was right out of Star Trek, right? And it just right through. And I just, I was just amazed. You know, what is this? And suddenly I heard a voice from me that said, soon. And I was back in my chair. And I can't tell you to, what this, to this day what it means. And I told a friend about it, and he recommended therapy. <laughs> Maybe I do need it, I don't know. But there are fewer and fewer people that I can share my heart with, fewer people that can help me to navigate this journey. But it's a time of absolute excitement where I'm learning to let go of the stability of the relationship with God. God is a consuming fire. And he wants to consume me in the fire of his love and take me where he goes. And to be fully, fully there with him, I've got to be able to let go of the handles of the certainties and be consumed by his love.